Welcome to the Introduction to Branch Office VPN Troubleshooting video tutorial. During this video, I'll show you how to check the status of your VPN tunnels and briefly describe how IPsec VPN negotiations work. Then, I'll show you how to use the VPN Diagnostic Report to troubleshoot VPN tunnel negotiation issues between two Firebox devices. A Branch Office VPN or BOVPN, is an IPsec VPN tunnel between two Firebox devices, or between a Firebox and a third-party VPN endpoint. It creates a secure connection between computers or networks in different locations. Each connection is called a tunnel, and all data sent through the tunnel is encrypted so it can be safely sent over a public network. The key to success when you create a BOVPN tunnel is to make sure that the configurations match on the two VPN endpoints of your tunnel. If there's a mismatch, there's a problem, and your VPN connection will fail. In this video, I'll show you how to troubleshoot a VPN that has a firebox at each end. If you have a VPN between a firebox and a third-party endpoint, don't worry. You can use the same methods to monitor and troubleshoot that VPN as well. To monitor the status of a VPN, you can use Firebox System Manager or Fireware Web UI. In Firebox System Manager, VPN tunnel status appears in the front panel tab. You can expand a gateway to see the tunnels that use it, and you can expand a tunnel to see tunnel statistics. From Firebox System Manager, you can also rekey tunnels or run the VPN diagnostic report. You can see the same information from Fireware Web UI. Here's the VPN status information on the VPN statistics page. Just click a gateway to expand it, or click a tunnel to see tunnel statistics and status. From here, you can also edit the VPN settings, rekey VPN tunnels, or run the VPN diagnostic report. For the remainder of this video, I'll work with Fireware Web UI. Before I show you how to use the VPN Diagnostic Report, I'll review some basics about how VPN negotiations work. VPN negotiations happen in two phases, Phase 1 and Phase 2. During Phase 1, the two gateway endpoints exchange credentials, agree on the negotiation mode, and agree on Phase 1 security settings. Successful completion of Phase 1 negotiations results in a secure, encrypted channel through which the two devices can negotiate Phase 2. During Phase 2 of VPN negotiations, the devices exchange tunnel routes, agree on whether to use PFS, and agree on a set of Phase 2 security settings. Successful completion of Phase 2 negotiations results in a VPN tunnel that can be used to securely route traffic between the two networks. If any of the Phase 1 or Phase 2 settings do not match, VPN negotiations fail. For a Firebox, you configure Phase 1 settings in the Gateway configuration. You configure Phase 2 settings in the Tunnel configuration. After you configure a VPN, the endpoint that first needs to route traffic through the tunnel starts VPN negotiations. During VPN negotiations, one Gateway endpoint the initiator sends proposed VPN settings to the other VPN endpoint. The other gateway endpoint is the responder. The responder receives the proposed settings, compares them to locally configured settings, and accepts or rejects the proposed settings. When troubleshooting a VPN tunnel, it is most useful to look at the VPN status on the responder. Only the responder knows both the proposed and local VPN settings. So, the VPN diagnostic messages on the responder contain more detailed information useful for VPN troubleshooting. Branch Office VPN tunnels require a reliable connection, matching VPN configuration settings, and policies to allow traffic through the tunnel. VPN negotiations can fail for a variety of reasons. Here are some of the more common ones. If VPN negotiations fail, you can look at the VPN diagnostic message on the responder to see what happened. In the VPN Statistics System Status page, the error indicator shows that VPN negotiation failed. Click the gateway to see the VPN diagnostic error and the tunnels associated with that gateway. Click a tunnel to see the tunnel statistics and settings. As I mentioned earlier, the VPN diagnostic messages on the responder contain the details you need for VPN troubleshooting. 
The VPN Diagnostic Report is an effective BOVPN troubleshooting tool because it shows you configuration and status information about a VPN over a short period of time. To troubleshoot this error, I can click Debug to start the VPN Diagnostic Report. So the report can include detailed log messages about tunnel negotiation, FireWare temporarily increases the diagnostic log level while it generates the report. By default, the report runs for 20 seconds. To generate a report with the most useful information, run the report while the device at the other end of the tunnel attempts to rekey or send traffic through the tunnel. Pay special attention to the conclusion section at the top. It includes a summary of the gateway and tunnel status, and if an error was detected, you can see the VPN diagnostic message. It also shows whether traffic was detected through the tunnel and what policies apply to that traffic. In this case, the conclusion shows a VPN diagnostic message, which indicates a mismatch in the gateway encryption settings. The VPN diagnostic log message says that this device received AES, but was expecting triple DES. The rest of this report shows details about the gateway and tunnel configuration, as well as runtime status. At the end of the report, the Related Logs section allows you to see the error in context with other negotiation-related log messages. This section only contains log messages if VPN negotiations occur while the report is running. To fix this VPN configuration, I can edit the Phase 1 settings, which, if you remember, are configured in the Gateway. To edit the Gateway, go back to the Branch Office VPN tab and then click Edit next to the Gateway. In the Gateway configuration, click here to view the information on the Phase 1 Settings tab. The encryption setting is in the Phase 1 Transform, so I edit that and change the encryption from triple DES to AES. Because the Firebox supports three different AES key lengths, you might need to check the remote configuration to see which AES key length to use. I know mine is 256-bit, so I'll select that here. After I save the configuration, I can go back to the VPN statistics page and run the VPN diagnostic report again to see if the tunnel was established. Remember, it's good to attempt to send traffic from the remote endpoint through the tunnel while the report runs. As you can see, the error alerts for this gateway and tunnel are gone because the gateway settings now match. When troubleshooting a VPN tunnel, it can be useful to send traffic through the tunnel while you run the VPN diagnostic report. To generate traffic through the tunnel, you can use ping. For troubleshooting, it is convenient to use the ping diagnostic task to do this right from FireWare Web UI or Firebox System Manager. With this task, you can generate ping traffic from a Firebox interface at the local end of the tunnel to another IP address at the other end of the tunnel. Then, you can run the VPN diagnostic report on the remote device. During this demonstration, I'll show you how to send a ping through the VPN tunnel from the web UI while I also run the VPN diagnostic report on the other device. My VPN is configured with a tunnel route to allow traffic between the private networks at 10.0.100.0/24 and 10.0.20.0/24. I can send a ping between the IP addresses of the trusted interfaces of each device. In order to send a ping through the network and collect log messages, I need to log into the web UI using a separate browser window or tab for each device. It doesn't matter which device sends the ping, as long as the diagnostic report is run on the other device. I'll run my diagnostic report on this device and will send my ping from this one. Navigate to the Network tab on the Diagnostics page to send traffic through the tunnel. Select this checkbox to ping from a Firebox interface. Here I'll type dash i to indicate that I want to send a ping from a Firebox interface. 
Then I'll type the IP address of the trusted interface on this end of the tunnel, followed by the IP address of the trusted interface at the other end of the tunnel. Before I click Run Task, I need to start the VPN Diagnostic Report on the other device so it can capture the log messages while the devices negotiate the tunnel. To start the report on this device, I click Debug next to the gateway. Then I go back to the first device and click Run Task to start the ping. Once I do this, my Firebox starts a continuous ping from the trusted interface at one end of the tunnel to the IP address at the other end. Now I can switch to the browser for the other device and wait for the diagnostic report to finish. As you can see here, my report now includes log messages. If your tunnel negotiation failed, the log messages will give you more information to troubleshoot the problem. If you want to run this report to capture log messages for a longer period of time, you can increase the duration up to 60 seconds and then try again. So far, I've shown you how to troubleshoot a traditional branch office VPN, configured as a gateway with tunnels. You can also monitor and troubleshoot a BOVPN virtual interface from the VPN statistics page. When you expand the details of a BOVPN virtual interface, Instead of tunnel routes, you will see a list of routes that use this virtual interface. Just as with any other BOVPN, you can click Debug here to run a VPN diagnostic report. The VPN diagnostic report shows the same type of information for VPN troubleshooting. If you have a BOVPN and need to troubleshoot any issues you might encounter, you can use either the Fireware Web UI or Firebox System Manager. Whichever tool you use, Keep these tips in mind. Run the VPN diagnostic report on the responder to get the most detailed VPN diagnostic and log messages. For a VPN between two Firebox devices, the default BOVPN Phase 1 and Phase 2 security settings always match. So these default settings are a good starting point for setting up a new VPN. If you use ping to generate traffic through a VPN tunnel, Make sure that the source and destination of the ping are both on subnets defined in the tunnel route. For more information about the VPN diagnostic report and VPN troubleshooting tips, see the WatchGuard website.